right path, but it's another to think that yours is the only path. Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Fifteen present. And Alderman Lewandowski is excused. Called in today. Things are going good. He sh should be looking forward to joining us again very soon. Um, and so we wish him well. Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Koth, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, Alderman Hammond. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the minutes of the last council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the last council meeting. Is there any discussion or changes? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. Resignations. City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Mayor received uh, <clears throat> Uh, a resignation from uh, Mark Miller advising that uh, because he's his wife is moving out to the town of Sheboygan he needs to resign from the Redevelopment Authority Board effective 10-3-2012. Alderman Hammond. Thank you Mr. Mayor. Uh, I make a motion to accept the resignation. Second. To so move second to accept the the resignation. Is there any discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. Do you have appointments tonight? None. Nothing. Public forum. City yeah. clerk. No. No. All right. First on the list this evening would be John Dolson. Could you please come up to the front, John? And I need your home address. Home address, 409 New York Avenue. All right, uh, good evening, Mayor, good evening, Council. Um, what I'm talking about tonight is the historic fish shanty on the upcoming agenda, item 2.10. Uh, and my goal is to save the shanty. And it just <coughs> came to my attention uh, this evening that the ownership of this shanty was taken over by the city in the late 60s <coughs> with the intent of preserving it. Um, with that, I don't know who has seen these. These are available in the Mead Library and other people on the Historic uh, Preservation Commission have these. It is a City of Sheboygan uh, Architectural and Historical Intensive Survey Report performed by LJM Architects uh, in conjunction with the uh, Wisconsin Historical Society. The purpose of this report um, is not a written definitive history of the city of Sheboygan, but rather to provide general historical information about the city. Uh, it goes on to say, it may be used to help determine the eligibility of resources for listings on the National Register of Historic Places, to establish historic districts, and to identify areas for economic redevelopment through historic preservation and rehabilitation, and to increase public awareness of the history and architecture of Sheboygan. Uh, it addressed, uh, it focused approximately uh, 109 structures with the potential for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, let's see, site-specific research was completed for most of the resources deemed eligible for listing on the National Register. Six potential historic districts were also identified, district maps and all, they're inside these documents. And this was 2002, 2004. That first booklet was 2002. This is the 2002, 2004 booklet where it gets into specifics. And I encourage everyone to take a view, not just for the fish shanties, but for all the historic buildings. Uh, in Sheboygan, uh, it entails, I think it's 1,200 approximately properties. 
And in chapter six under industries, the fishing industry has approximately a page and a half of, uh, of recognition in the book, meaning it's significant. And of that, being more significant and specific, there's this paragraph four fish shanties. A combination of the remaining uh, shanties and new shanties are located along the north bank of the Sheboygan River from 631 to 819 Riverfront Drive and currently house shops and restaurants uh, intermingled with historically appropriate commercial fishing company and bait shop. The buildings are simple, front gabled, one and two story structures with wood clapboard siding. Because the fish shanty village is locally signif a locally significant industry and it is the only historic resource associated with Sheboygan's fishing industry, the original shanties located at 701, 705, 715, 733, and 819 Riverfront Drive are potentially eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. All of this uh, kind of validates why the city took ownership of the building uh, and I think all, uh, more than just this building, um, down on the riverfront back in the 60s. Uh, and to, be, to have available properties on the South Pier, which is a, a great addition to the city, uh, but with available properties um, that are there ready to be built on, it just doesn't make sense to uh, raise a piece of our history. Um, in closing, I am for smart development. I am for development. Development that preserves the character of Sheboygan's historic waterfront. Development that is attractive to residents and visitors who come here for our unique riverfront. Many city riverfronts that I've visited up and down both sides of Lake Michigan have lost their authenticity. Let's not follow their lead. Please save the shanty. Thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Next on the list would be Jean Kittleson. Jean, hey. can you give me your home address, please? 1716 Illinois Avenue in Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So nice to see all of you here this evening. I thank you for the opportunity uh, to come and speak to you this evening about an event that's coming up in just three short weeks. That's Saturday, October 20th. Um, and this event is very near and dear to my heart. Um, it came, I, I need to tell you, this came about as a collaboration uh, of our city's wellness committee. Uh, that was four years ago it started. Our city's wellness committee, the wellness committee of the county and the school district as well. Uh, we got together and wanted to put on a fun event for all of our employees and their families and friends and uh, uh, a way, as a way to promote health, wellness, and fitness. And thus, the Pink Brigade March for All Cancer Education, Awareness, and Prevention began. Uh, this is a two-mile 5K uh, fun run, walk run. Uh, 5K, I believe, is 3.1 miles. And again, it's Saturday, October 20th. <laughs> and it starts at 7 o'clock in the morning, 7 to 10. Anybody, you can come at any time and walk. The mass, uh, the group start will be at 9 o'clock. And it's down at the Sheboygan County YMCA. Um, I wanted to come before you this evening to let you know that if you register by October 6th, uh, there's a discount on t-shirts and entry into the Biggest Brigade Award. However, um, you can come and register the day of the event as well. Um, uh, we encourage all of you to, to come, and especially our city employees and their, all their family and friends, uh, most welcome. You can register that morning as well. I need to let you know that all proceeds from this event will be going to the Sheboygan County Cancer Care Fund, um, and that's an organization that uh, helps our friends and neighbors right here uh, in Sheboygan County. The money stays right here in our own backyard, so that's also a good thing as well. So I'd encourage you, please, mark your calendars for Saturday, October 20th. Um, come on down to the YMCA. You're going to meet some really great people. The, 
Pink Brigade ladies always are there with us leading the, leading the charge. They would put together some uh, awesome raffle baskets for us every year. And they're just an amazing bunch of ladies. Um, and come and get your exercise. It's a good a way to start your day. And also uh, donate to a very worthwhile cause. So thank you very much. Um, one other thing I wanted to say to you as well, uh, we had Bike and Walk Week uh, back June uh, 9th through the 15th. And that's always a challenge too with the county and the school district. And I'm very pleased to say, as you can see from the plaque on the wall, the city won that challenge again this year as well. So I really want to thank all our uh, employees for, for participating in that one too. That's always a nice uh, collaboration with the city and the county and the school district. And uh, especially our girls in the finance department. I can't I, I need to thank them because they're always promoting this event, uh, the Bike and Walk to Work Week as well. So we look forward to doing that again next year too. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> next would be Mike Brunette. <coughs> Mike, can I get your home address, please? 1925 South 26th Street. South 26, okay, mm -hmm. we'll have five minutes. All right, um, I'm here to, okay, thanks everybody who's here and everybody who can't find a remote and happens to be watching this. And it's like, I'm here to talk about the same thing John Dolson was, and it's basically saving the shanty. And it's like, it might not seem like much, but for any town, you only have so much history, and in Sheboygan, you're hard pressed to find anything. It's either covered in vinyl, aluminum, or it's gone. And in Sheboygan, we're a fishing town. We come from the water, we're the people of the perch. If you are what you eat, we are perch. It's been eons since the bratwurst were roaming the fields. I have never seen one in my life. <laughs> relegated to the museums of the county, and right now, we, we still have a few random perch floating around, and you can still buy them, but it's like, there, it's a big part of our history, and that shanty is a big part of that history. I can't think of many other things. There's a few fishing boats, and it's kind of cool when you go into a town and you see real stuff. Museums are fun, and we're a tourist town from what I hear, and it's like you go to towns, you want stuff that's cool. You want stuff that, wow, that's real. Like if you walked in and you saw a real dinosaur, you'd be pretty impressed. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. But it's like you take a kid to a museum, he sees a plastic dinosaur, he's like, well, I got one of them at home. And it's like here, we have a real functioning, I mean, it isn't functioning, but it could be made into whatever you want. It's the bones of it. It's in pretty good shape. I went and looked at them. I'm not a structural engineer, but I can't tell the difference really between that and the other buildings other than that, what's in it of the old buildings. And I'd like to introduce you to some friends of mine who are, for the most part, long gone, but they're Sheboyganites. They're Cecil T B. Tweak and the Normal Guys, and it's well, they keep a song. To stay in. Level that office building in Sheboygan. This is from the and 70s, it and it's like, and <laughs> you get the idea. But they were singing back then about we're destroying all the stuff that's our history, you know. And it's like I feel the same same way about it, and it's like, and right now. That building is our pyramid. If you can think of something else that represents Sheboygan, show it to me. And it might not be the biggest, most beautiful thing, but it's what we got. And it's like, and I think we should go for it, at least give it a chance. There's plenty of other space. And as a matter of fact, there's a building two doors down that's from, for sale right now, which means somebody's looking to turn it over. And I don't really understand where, they're in, where somebody's incentive is to buy that if they can all of a sudden just out of the blue say, let's knock this building down and I'll build what I want right there. Who wouldn't rather do that? It's like, it's, I think it's, it probably, it's probably a better deal. And it's like, maybe I'm wrong, but that's pretty much all I have to say on the matter. And I hope that it at least gets to the point, I know you can vote it and it'll be ripping through right now, but I'd like to see it at least get some discussion. Cause like John said, it's eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. And sure, you can say it at a lot of buildings, but that one really is. And it's like, that's all I got. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> and last on the list would be Alderman Wongman. <coughs> Oh, 
I'll take a little bit different podium tonight. How Bill, can I follow that act? I mean, <laughs> wow. Bill, can we get your home address, please? Oh, 1223 South 23rd Street. As you come into Sheboygan, there's a sign out on the highway. It says, come and see historic downtown Sheboygan. Well, I'm still looking for it. Does anybody know where it is? If you do, please let me know. Back in 1836, we were founded as a, a village. We had 12 buildings here. The first industry in Sheboygan was a fishing industry. The first products shipped out of Sheboygan were barrels of smoke fish that were sent to Chicago. So the fishing industry has a real foundation in Sheboygan. I've got a couple of old friends who were fishermen, and they're very dismayed about the fact that we would even consider tearing it down. There was a time in our country's past where we were going to junk old Ironsides, USS Constitution. And a great ballad was written about it which saved the ship. But can you imagine today destroying the Constitution, what that would have meant to our city or to our country? If you'd like me to make a list of all the buildings downtown that were torn down, I, I, it would take quite a while and it'd be a very long, long list. We had some beautiful buildings downtown that we tore down and made parking lots, which is nice, but now we don't have any cars to put in the parking lots. Our riverfront was supposed to represent the marine heritage of our city, and our city had a very deep marine heritage. Years ago, if you wanted a sunbonnet, a, sunbonnet, a fire truck, or a steam engine, it came by ship. If you wanted to go somewhere, you went by ship. But we've lost that. Take a walk down the main street of Manitowoc, which happens to be 8th Street as well. Take a look at Sheboygan Falls, Plymouth. These cities have been preserved, but we didn't see that here. We had the beautiful old bank of Sheboygan over here that had the tallest Georgian marble columns in the state of Wisconsin. And you know where they are today? They're down on the lakefront as landfill buried in the sand. The inside was covered with pink marble, beautiful uh, murals, which fortunately were saved and are now on exhibit in Meade Public Library. But our city has been destroyed. If you look at 8th Street, I love the library, I, but the library is a go-to place that could have been built anywhere. We tore down a whole square block of buildings to build a library. Can you imagine when that took off the tax rolls? But this, it's a process in Sheboygan. We had the grand old Festi Hotel downtown, right across the street from Fountain Park. Can you imagine if that building was still standing there and, and it was refurbished? So now we're looking at these old, bored, shanties, gray, but it's the last remnant we have of our fishing industry. And as John Dolson said, it's time we have to protect this stuff because it is Sheboygan. Now they said we could uh, probably put office space in there and possibly living space. Well, I can go across the other side of the river and I'll show you a whole bunch of them over there that are empty right now. You could move in them tomorrow and the owners would be grateful. But I think that side of the river should be preserved because once it's gone, it's gone. Our kids are going to grow up and never know what the heck Sheboygan looked like. In 1986, the council appointed me, at my request, city historian. And it's kind of an official position. I don't have a salary, I don't have a budget, I don't have an office, but I do have very flexible hours. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I get an opportunity to go out and talk to people. In fact, I was out at Kohler today talking to a group of senior citizens out there. Tomorrow there's a busload of people coming in from Minnesota and I'm gonna conduct them around town and show them some of our historic spots. Well, it's gonna be a short trip because we don't have much to show them really. So we have this down there. The lake, the riverfront should be preserved as a maritime, a part of our maritime heritage. And, you know, we can build office spaces anywhere you want. I can take you a block away from here and show you an office building that's been empty since it was built. So I, I can't see that there's a pressing need for more office space. But uh, these, these buildings must be uh, preserved, or at least the one must be preserved to, to show our children that maybe we really cared. There's little bits of history all over the city. There's a brick street between Superior Avenue and Michigan Avenue, North 12th Street. You may not be aware of it, but there was a document that I put through that preserved that street for all time to remain as a brick street. But it's just these small bits and pieces that we can save here and there. But Sheboygan has really lost it. It's a, it's a tragedy when you look downtown and see what's been, what's been removed for parking lots. And we have lots of parking lots. 
Thank you. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> Move on to the consent agenda number 21 through 223. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass and file all our O's, pass, accept and adopt all our C's, general ordinances and ordinances. Under discussion. Alderman Raisler. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask to pull 210. Second. It moved and seconded to pull 210 from the consent agenda. We'll talk about 210 first. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, again, would support um, saving the shanty. I, I agree with all the speakers, and um, I, I think we have to preserve our heritage. Alderman Bourne. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, could somebody answer the question, then, if we vote to save the shanty down there, who's going to be in charge of renovating it. I know when this came before Public Works a few months ago, the estimates from some local contractors were about seven, was about $70,000, I believe, if my memory serves me correct. So uh, the, the condition of the building right now is not great. So if we vote to save it, what's going to, what are going to be the steps and who's going to pay for the restoration? If somebody can answer that. Alderman Hammond. I don't have an answer for you, Alderman Bourne. Um, I got the same email as everybody else did that there's an anonymous um, person that uh, might be out there. Um, right now, um, we have a development um, on, on the slate. Um, keep in mind, this document, too, isn't authorizing any type of um, development down there. It's simply deeding it over to the redevelopment authority um, so and Steve can maybe speak to the legalese of this a little bit better than I can but basically deeding it over to the redevelopment authority um, so that they can negotiate a ground lease and stuff like that so this isn't even to the development stage yet the ground lease hasn't been negotiated which of course this body has to approve if I'm not mistaken attorney McLean um, so we're quite a ways from any development this is just trying to clean it up and get it um, into the RDA's hands Attorney McLean, any comment? Uh, just if the, the plan is to redevelop the property, uh, really the redevelopment authority of the city has jurisdiction over redevelopment projects. So that's, uh, that's why the document is here to uh, propose to convey the property from the city to the redevelopment authority for redevelopment purposes. Um, Steve, then the redevelopment authority, while, while there is a, a developer on hand, they would have the ability to um, look at anybody's proposal at that time for development and whether it be saving the shanty and developing as is or demolishing it in a new development, both those things would have to go to redevelopment? They would, yes, they'd go to redevelopment as well as uh, the council would have to approve the terms and conditions of any uh, uh, redevelopment agreement, whatever the... Uh, project would be. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. I guess I'm just looking at a little bit more time. We can always uh, bring it back up at another meeting if uh, we give the Historical Society and, and, and John and some people some time to, to work on this before it goes into redevelopment. Uh, I guess I'm just looking for a little bit more time. So. Any other discussion? Alderman Bourne. Thanks again, Mayor. Uh, what would be a, the appropriate vote then for saving it? To vote no on this uh, 2.10? Yes. Yes, vote no. I guess that's a matter of opinion. Right. If Thank you. Alderman Raisler says yes, and Alderman <laughs> Hammond shaking his head saying, I'm not sure. Alderman, uh, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to see if we could uh, buy some time as well and see if we could save the, the shanty. I do realize that there's an opportunity cost here and we do have an existing development for that facility. Um, it's my understanding that the next RDA meeting is October 18th. Is that correct? Can somebody confirm that? Yes. Could we hold this document until that time and give Mr. Dolson and his client time to 
uh, come up with plans, architectural drawings, and remedies to get the building up to where it needs to be, um, at least till the 18th. I sure we can do that. I'm not sure what document they'd be talking about on the 18th if we don't send them something. But I'm sure they could. I see the uh, chairman here. I'm sure they could add that to their agenda if that's the wishes of the council. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, I, I can't emphasize enough. This isn't approving the development. Um, this is just doing it over to Redevelopment Authority. As Attorney McLean mentioned, the council still has to approve any um, ground leases, any type of um, development um, agreements. And that's where, again, we would have the time to be able to make sure we can get it vetted. I, too, would not have a problem with seeing this thing stay where it's at. Um, you know, and I would encourage uh, Mr. Dolson and, and his anonymous um, developer to submit something to the redevelopment authority as soon as possible so we can get moving on that. But again, um, this is just simply transferring the property into the redevelopment authority. Any future development on that would still have to be approved by this body and would provide us ample, ample time to be able to vet it. And also, again, hopefully Mr. Dolson and his developer um, can get their documents in the redevelopment authority as well. So I would encourage you to, to vote yes, um, get this over so we can keep the process moving on. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Donahue. Um, my question relates to uh, the plans of the redevelopment authority. Is there a timeline? I note that the chair is here of the re redevelopment authority. And, and my question would be, is there some urgency on the part of the RDA to tear the building down? Um, why are we transferring it right now, or wanting to transfer it right now? And what, if any, um, uh, ill effect would there be just to keep it in the city ownership at this point? I guess that's my question, just a procedural one. I believe the reason it's right now is that the lease from the current people are up, and we didn't renew the lease. Um, so the, the lease that we, we had in the past is no longer valid. So now the decision would be to, if we're gonna develop this, as the city attorney said, the proper place for the, any development discussions <coughs> is redevelopment authority. Um, I don't that would think just be my follow-up question. Would in fact the preservation of the building and the development <coughs> of either its preservation or, or a, the highest and best use be better done within the context of the RDA as opposed to the city? And that's, that's my question. If, um, if there is nothing imminent from the redevelopment authority to tear the building down, but rather there would be a forum for people who are rightly concerned about the preservation of the building to more effectively work with the RDA, why wouldn't we execute the quit claim deed with the thought that eventually we have some some control over what happens ultimately as I'm understanding it. So, I mean, that's my question. I, I, I just don't know the answer and I would be, um, if Ms. Flicky Paneski is here, maybe she might give us do a sense. Do you want to move to open the floor to? Thank you, I would do that. Second. It's been moved and seconded to open the floor for the chairman of the uh, Redevelopment Authority. All those, do we need a roll call? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> For the record, you just want to give your address, Roberta. I am Roberta Felicki Paneski. I live at 28 North Point Drive. And the chairman of? And I chair the Redevelopment Authority. Um, this came before the Redevelopment Authority on September 6th, and we did have a letter of intent to develop that property. Uh, staff gave us the background, told us what had transpired both in the Historic Preservation Committee. This has been in process since January 10th, and uh, the tenant was notified um, in May to vacate the property. Uh, the city and the tenant of that building vacated in August, and we acted upon it in September. 
it was shortly, and I spoke with Mr. Dolson just before the meeting. I came home from that September 6th meeting, and in my email sent that day was a note from Mr. Dolson. Knowing that, I forwarded that um, observation to staff and requested that it be entered upon the next redevelopment agenda, even though we had acted upon it. The redevelopment authority saw the note, thought about what we had discussed in the previous meeting, voted to file that note. Um, I, am, I am understanding that there would be some sense to making this slower, um, reconsidering. We do have a developer who has stated that if the city doesn't want to move ahead, he can do other things in other places also. So you don't want to let developers hang too long, but it is also important, and it's not that we're destroying the heritage, we're just concerned the building's going to fall down, okay? So um, I think there wouldn't be any problem to maintaining it until the October 18th meeting. Regrettably, I will not be in the country for that one, but the authority will meet on the 18th. Um, I think, as Ms. Donahue <coughs> said, um, I think eventually the property needs to be transferred to the redevelopment authority because we are the people who develop downtown and the riverfront. Any questions? other questions? Any other questions? Thank you. Any other questions on 210? Yeah, we would need a motion now to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the resolution, which would then authorize the quick claim deed from the city to RDA. Um, so moved. It's been moved and seconded <laughs> to accept and adopt the resolution, um, which in case would quick deed the property to the redevelopment authority. Under any any other discussion? Alderman Bellinger. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, if we vote no on this, if the majority votes no, what then happens? Is it with the, this quick claim deed or quit claim deed? Steve? Um, Alderman Bellinger, in my opinion, it's status quo. It's uh, if the council, I guess, would be indicating the way I would read it would, would not be interested in having the property redeveloped and obviously then would be interested in doing something else with it. And uh, I guess it would sit until somebody came up with some proposal as to what to do with it. Uh, so, so nothing happens if uh, so we could revisit it after down. the 18th. <coughs> sure. Okay. Any other Questions or discussion? Harry Nunn, clerk will call the roll. Six ayes, nine noes. Motion fails. Now on the rest of the consent agenda, 2-1 through 2-23, excluding 2-10. We already have the motion. Any other discussion? Three none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. Three one will lie <coughs> over. Three two through three thirteen will be referred. Four one resolution authorizing entering an amendment the third modification of the project agreement for designing dredging with Sheboygan River area of concern. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask for a suspension of the rules, please. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Is there any discussion on suspension? We'll be voting on suspension first. eyes to suspend. Motion carried. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to pass the resolution. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded to uh, pass the <coughs> resolution. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Four, four two will I over. Four three through four seven will be referred. Reports committee. Five one. Report by law and licensing recommending taxi cab drivers license number ninety six seventy two be denied. Alderman Vanderwilly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded. The RC be accepted and adopted. Is Rachel Least here tonight? She's not here. We did invite her to two meetings and she did not show up to either of them. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Five two reported committee from law and licensing recommending that taxi cab driver license ninety six seventy five be denied. Alderman Vanderwilly. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Alderman Vanderwood. Is Eugenia Garrison here this evening? She's not here. Um, she again also did not show up for either meeting that we invited her to. Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 15 <coughs> ayes. Motion carried. 5-3. From law and licensing recommending that taxi driver license number 7681 be denied. Alderman Vanderwilly. Move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Alderman Vanderwilly. Is Matthew Fogel here? He is not here. Uh, again, we invited him twice and he did not show up. Any further discussion? Clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 5-4 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi driver license 70, 9674. Alderman Vanderwilly. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Alderman Vanderwilly. Is Nicholas Daly here? He is not here. Same thing. He did not show up for either meeting. Any further discussion? Clerk will call the roll. <coughs> <coughs> Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. Five five. An RC from Long License recommending denying beverage operator license operators license number ninety six seventy six. Alderman Vanderwood. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. Is Hannah Gustafson here this evening? She is not here. We voted uh, three to one to deny the license due to some pending charges for possession of THC. Any further discussion? Clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 5-6 by report of committee from law and licensing recommending the nine beverage operator license 9671. Alderman Vanderwood. Thank you. I ask that this be referred back to committee. Second. Been moved and seconded that uh, this RC be referred back to the committee. Clerk will call the roll. Julie? Bill? 15 ayes. Motion carried. 5 7 law and license. Report from law and licensing recommending taxi drivers. Operator's license number 7678 be de denied. Alderman Vanderwilly. I think I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. Is Kia Vang here this evening? Um, same thing, was not at either meeting that we invited him to. Thank you. Any other discussion? Clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 5-8, report of committee from law and licensing recommending granting taxi driver's license number 9684, contingent upon the applicant being corrected with her warning to include all violations of future applicant. Alderman Vanderwilly. Thank you. I move that the RCB accepted and license granted. Second. It's 
Been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted and the license be granted. Under discussion. Clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 5 8, an RC from law and licensing recommending, I'm no, sorry, 5 9, RC by law and licensing making no recommendation on the beverage license. Operator's license 8945, Alderman Van Der Woolley. No recommendation. What would the motion be for that? The motion would. You didn't make we either need, right. So we would need a motion from the floor to either grant or deny. Alderman Van Der Woolley. Alderman Goff. <laughs> Sorry. I move to deny. Second. It's been moved and seconded to deny the operator's license 8945. Under discussion. A little background on this. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is for Erin Vreeke. She was before the council back in July after um, our committee had voted to deny her license. Um, then the council also denied, voted to deny after she spoke to us. Um, she had gotten her license in 2011 and a short time later, I believe like a month or two later, she was, um, uh, she got in trouble for underage um, drinking and had a fake ID when she entered a uh, local bar so she already had her license and now this came before us again and we you know quite a few of the people on the committee had a problem with the fact that she had done something um, to that extent with her um, just having gotten her license however the committee this last time could not make a decision we were two and two for the entire um, vote no matter what we tried to vote on so that's why it's back here with a no recommendation Is there any other discussion uh, I would advise that the motion is to deny the license uh, on beverage operators' licenses. If you deny, you need to indicate the reason for the denial. Uh, so uh, perhaps Alderman Koth could indicate what the basis for the denial would be in the event that the council voted that way. Alderman Koth. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Um, Aaron Vreeke was before this council July 16th. And we voted, um, the vote was nine to six to deny. She came before law and license again two months later. And um, we had, I believe back in July 10th, law and license voted to deny. And at this time at law and license, it was a tie vote. Two voted, one changed their mind actually. So it was two to two. So she was actually here July 16th. We voted nine to six to deny. Again, just to reiterate, why would we change our mind? And, and the denial is based on her record violations or her current record and violations? That is correct. Her, her current record of violations. The police chief would like to speak. Chief? Good evening. I'd just like it to be known that the police department objects to the issuance of this license. Um, to fill in the background a little bit more, she was granted a license with a warning in February of 2011. In March of 2011, she was arrested for loitering and underage consumption in a local tavern, at which time she was in possession of a false ID. When she was questioned about the false ID by the police officer, she lied to them and said that that's who she was and it was the only ID that, that she had. Her real ID was found on her. She was warned for obstructing. On July of 18th of 2011, she was cited for underage consumption after an investigation um, regarding other activities in the city. <coughs> on September 11th of 2011, she was cited for underage consumption at Kohler Andre State Park. Then on July 2012, she was denied in front of the committee. And then in July, she was denied by this council of a license. I think that 
based on that activity, she has strongly demonstrated that at this point in her life, she lacks the maturity and judgment to have this privilege. And I think this is something that you should take very seriously. Thank you. Okay, the motion is to deny. Is the applicant here this evening since we're denying the claim? Is Erin Aaron Vruki here this evening? No, she's not. Thank you. So the motion is to deny the license based on a record of violations related to the licensed activity. Clerk will call the roll. Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion carries. Five ten from law and licensing recommend denying taxi driver's license ninety six ninety one. Alderman Van. Thank you. I move that the <coughs> RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Alderman Van. Is Kathleen Fields here this evening? She's not here. The vote was four to zero to deny her license based on. Um, her record of there was a recent OWI. Any further discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. Five eleven from finance recommending establishing monthly premium equivalent rates for medical benefits. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, based on some of the information that's come to light, I'd ask that it be forwarded back to uh, Finance Committee. Second. It's been moved and seconded to refer this document back to Finance. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, um, I understand, uh, well, we won't go there, but I'm gonna not support this going back to <coughs> Finance. Um, I know many of you saw the email that uh, the mayor had sent out today, and unfortunately, it couldn't have been further from accurate. Um, on the advice of our legal, on the advice of our broker, um, and which I talked to later on this evening, um, they and um, emphatically um, do not think we should be lowering our health insurance rates. Um, and so, I'm looking at a survey right here from Milliman Incorporated. For those in the employee benefits world, this is kind of the Bible that sets health insurance rates. And they um, looked at our health plan and said. Our rates should be $776 a month for a single, $1,824 for a family plan. Right now we're at $737 and $1731 respectively with no, with no uh, um, inclination to raise that. We wanted to keep those rates the same. Lowering the health insurance rates, talking with the broker and other professionals in the industry, um, one of the things that uh, other municipalities have done is lowered their health insurance rates. Um, because they had one good claims year. And we had a pretty decent claims year so far this year. Um, now we have three months left, who knows what's gonna happen, but we had a pretty good claims year up to this point. Only to find out that they come back, claims come back to the norm, and now we gotta raise rates even higher in future years, and I can't support that. The ability to stabilize our rates and keep them like they are now is good for our employees. And again, from our professional, um, the, the people we hire to advise us, to Milliman, every one of them have indicated, again, that our rates are where they're at and they're good and they should not be lowered. So why would we go ahead and do it, send it back to finance just to have the conversation, excuse me, just to have the conversation again and come up with the same result. So I'm not gonna support this. Um, I think we should pass it um, and uh, move on to other things. Thank you. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I also will not support this because I, I, I tend to uh, trust the experts on these matters. And the, I, I blatantly, I, I think the um, email that was sent out earlier today um, from the mayor was um, inappropriate. Um, and it was soon Excuse followed me, Alderman by. Carlson, you're supposed to address the chair, not the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I, I think the email you sent out was inappropriate. Um, it was soon followed up by uh, one of our experts, our human resources manager, and um, Alderman Hammond did speak of his conversation that uh, happened after these. So once again, I will not support these. Thank you. Any other discussion? Alderman Donahue. 
Um, I've been a partner in a small business and responsible for setting health insurance rates and the grisly, gl grim process of talking to brokers, finding out the rates, being astonished at the costs, the limitations on services and so forth. As hard as that is, the second hardest part is talking to your employees about it. People want some stability. Reducing costs briefly for one year based on one claim year may feel good, but then payback is really difficult the next year or the year after that when claims go really high. Again, I think that stability for the city at this point should be one of our main, one of the main criteria that we are looking at as we are making decisions. Now, <coughs> I <coughs> just uh, segued to my email, and I had actually looked at my email at about one o'clock this afternoon, thought I'm in good shape because I'm all caught up, I know what's going on. Well, apparently not. So this is all kind of a surprise for me. Um, I think that unless there's some truly compelling reason for rejecting the Finance Committee's long, hard-considered decision in this respect, we've spent a lot of time on this, and I'm just not, it's just not good to, to mess with your broker, is, is, the, is the bottom line I learned as a business owner. So I can't support the motion. <coughs> I think we just need to settle down and move forward, and I think that we can do that and, and, and just not add the drama and the churning to, to the, what's already a difficult process. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask that uh, our HR director, Sandy Rourke, um, come forward, and she was part of the meeting that happened today and then also has had many dealings, obviously, as our HR professional with um, our broker on this issue. So. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. It is very easy to confuse numbers. There are so many numbers flying around. This is something I do on a daily basis, and I have gone through probably six to eight months worth of time with our broker. So the numbers that we both interpreted, it, it is understandable how it gets confused. We take a look at a rolling 12 months. So. In July, we took a look at our record from July 2012 back to July of 2011, and we were doing good, 8% less than what we projected. Then we go one month forward, and we're at 6.4% less, so we're not trending in the right direction, but it's still good. The scary part is if you take a look at what's going to happen to us the rest of the year, we can't, we can't know what's going to happen. We can't predict it. We can't understand it. And... So the recommendation is to let's, it's wait and see. If you start taking a reduction at this point and all of a sudden you do get the claims, then we're in a world of hurt. So that's, that was their recommendation. Sandy, at the, at the meeting this morning that we both attended, it was at noon today or 11.30ish till 1ish. That's why you didn't get the emails till afternoon because we didn't have the meeting till noon or one o'clock. Part of the discussion was um, about the reserves and the options of the reserves and what to do with the reserves if they're too high. One of the options that was given to us was you could reduce the rates. Am I incorrect? I think she said that we could reduce the reserve. Mm -hmm. it, you, you had asked if there was a $4 million reserve, could we reduce that? Right, and it, in that discussion it was how could we do that and how could we move those things? And one of the options would be re to reduce the rates, is from what I remember. It, it is an option. Right. It's not what they recommend. And, and then earlier they said where, where I got the 8% number of not being appropriate was from them saying they sent or gave us a number as of July that was around 13%, I believe, something like that. And then it was 8% currently that the re rates were, I, the way she said it, minus 8%. There was a minus 8% in July and then a minus 6.4 in <clears throat> August. And there was a 13 somewhere too in there. I don't know where the 13 okay. was. Well, anyways, Order. those were the options that were given to us and that, that's the only reason I sent the email was those are options. And those options can only explore, be explored if we 
looking to and do those things. Any other questions of Sandy? Yeah. Alderman Ham of Sandy. <coughs> Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sandy, in, in your years and H or as a, uh, uh, well, let me back up. In the meeting, um, the M3 broker indicated um, what was her stance on, on lowering the rates? She does not recommend it based on the advice of their actuary. Okay. Um, and in your experience, you know, working in the private sector, you know, employees' responses to a lot of movements in, in rates and premiums and those types of things, they kind of like that or they prefer more stability? I've never seen a lowered rate, so I don't know what that response would be. <laughs> <laughs> but I have seen a response when, when the carrier comes at us with a 20-some percent increase, and it's uh, pretty shocking. Thank you. Any other questions for Sandy? Thank you, Sandy. Any other discussion? <coughs> the motion then is to refer to finance. Right. Clerk will call the roll. Four ayes, 11 noes. Motion failed. Motion from Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to uh, accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. To so move and seconded to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the... Hang on just a sec. Roll. I will. Sorry. No, that's okay. <coughs> 13 eyes, two noes. Motion carries. 1412 recommended by a committee report from finance recommending authorizing transfer appropriations in the 2012 budget. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. So I move and second to accept and adopt the f recommendation of the finance and pass the resolution. Is there any other discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Fifteen three through fifteen three and fifteen four. Thirteen. Five thirteen yeah, and five fourteen. <laughs> We'll fly over. 6 1 ordinances introduced. 1 6 1 through 6 4 will be referred. Other matters? Attorney McLean. 7 1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. Yeah, we'll do the law and license. 7-2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Brian Johnston requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1917 North 5th Street. That will go to public protection and safety. 7-3 is a resolution amending resolution number 3512-13 by Alder Person Heideman passed on July 16th authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a contract between the city and Moss and Associates. Uh, in the amount of $24,450 for the right-of-way acquisition for the Iser Avenue reconstruction project. That lies over. 7-4 <coughs> is an RO by the city clerk submitting the current job description of the chief administrative officer. That will go to salary and grievance. <coughs> Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene into closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19851E, Wisconsin Statutes, for the purpose of delivering the possible sale of public property where the competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session, and for the purpose of discussion and formulation of negotiation strategies relative to the possible agreement for combining emergency dispatch services where competitive and bargaining <coughs> reasons require a closed session. 
Second. It's moved, seconded to convene in closed session. Uh, we'll take a five minute break and then we'll go into closed session. Clerk will call the roll. Jeremy? Steve? 15 ayes. We will not be coming back into open sessions. Come back here. 